live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Las Vegas with AWS, Amazon Web Services, reInvent our sixth year. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Dave, six years, two sets. Um, people rolling out of the keynote. So much action, we got another day coming tomorrow. We got two great guests here. We got Dr. Vasi Philomen, who's the general manager of machine learning and AI at Amazon Web Services, and Dr. Taha Kashaut, senior leader at healthcare and AI at Amazon. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so Thank much. You so I'm so excited us. that you're here because I've been waiting to have this conversation. Dave and I have been, we just had an analysis of the distractions and moving up the stack around machine learning. So much value now coming online that's been in the works around AI, or really mainly machine learning that's creating AI-like benefits. Andy just had to spend a lot of time in his keynote, I'd say almost a third of it, around AI-like capabilities and how Amazon integrates in from you know, chipsets with elastic inference, yep. beautiful, mm. it's just good stuff. So congratulations. So Thank you. what does it mean? What does it mean for customers right now who want to kind of grok what's going on with Amazon and AI? Is it, Yep. A new sets of services coming online, is it how long it's been in the works? Explain. Yeah, our mission at AWS has always been to take technologies that have been traditionally available uh, for a few special technology companies and take that and make it available to all developers. And we've done that, I should say that we've done that fairly well when it comes to compute, when it comes to storage, when it comes to databases, analytics, and we're doing the same thing for machine learning and AI. Um, and what we're doing, because it's a new field, is we've got to innovate at three layers of our stack. Um, so the bottom most layer, as you saw in the keynote earlier, has to do with frameworks and infrastructure. So this is more for the people that fully understand how to deal with machine learning models and like to go in and tweak uh, these models. The middle layer then is for everyday developers and the data scientists, and that's sort of where SageMaker fits in. And finally, at the top layer of the stack is where we have our application services, and this is meant for developers that don't want to get into the weeds of um, machine learning, but they still want to use, make use of all of these technologies to make their applications more smarter. So they get the insight benefits, get the insights out of the data without getting down on the weeds. Exactly. And people who want to get down on the weeds, they can get down and dirty with all this other stuff. Yeah. Look at that, right? Yeah, and typically what we do at the top layer of the stack is we try and solve really hard problems. Um, and so customers can now take advantage of it because we've solved it for them and they can just take that and integrate it into their application. Real quick, what was the hardest problem that you guys solved? I mean, traditionally, speech recognition is a very hard problem. Um, that's one of the hard problems. The other one is NLP, natural language processing. But I would say speech recognition is probably a hard yeah. problem. And we just launched uh, streaming transcription so you can now transcribe live uh, as somebody speaks. And of course, you can connect it to translate and translate it as well live, so. Well, great for our Q videos. Looking forward to having that online. So, Taha, as a, as a healthcare practitioner, how does this all apply to, to that industry? What kind of projects are you guys working on in that regard? Of course, yeah. So, I mean, to, um, to uh, Vasi's uh, point is, we want to continue to innovate on behalf of the customers uh, across all um, uh, layers of the stack, machine learning. In particular, this week, we launched Amazon Comprehend Medical. Uh, particularly in a harder, hard problem where the majority of healthcare data is captured, conversation and observations in an unstructured format. Um, uh, so uh, petabytes of data is stored across the entire healthcare system that's in unstructured for, uh, form. So to drive actionable insights and to be able to find the right elements to treat patients or to manage a population or even to do accurate billing, it's been really in, important that we can um, empower our customers uh, with building blocks for them to build the right solutions to take advantage uh, of that. So Amazon Comprehend Medical uh, is able to um, um, understand the medical language and the context, similar to how clinicians understand the medical language and context. For example, if you're looking at um, a patient medical note, uh, Amazon Comprehend Medical is able to, with high accuracy, extract uh, medical conditions um, uh, medications, uh, tests, procedures being done on the patients, as well as the relationship between those and understanding that context, that this condition and this um, uh, treatment uh, go together, as well as the nuances. For example, you know, a, pa a patient has no family history of X, yeah. uh, or uh, there's no smoking history, 
all those are things in relation in the past or in the future or other members. Uh, and this is really what we're really proud about uh, launching Amazon Comprehend Medical. Talk about how it works because you know, I, healthcare has been a great field around yep. uh, where AI's, old fashioned AI, I'd say, when I was doing it in the 80s, early 90s, ontologies were really popular and it's linguistics is kind of known. But now, that, but you need a linguistics guru to do that. You mentioned streaming, the transcribe, you got metadata. How do you guys get this kind of benefit when the ball's moving so fast around these rapidly changing verticals like healthcare? Because healthcare's got a big problem like other verticals where there's so many notifications, what do I pay attention to? There's so much data, how do you put the puzzle together? Yeah. Yeah. Let me first give you some context here. Um, as you're probably aware, um, at last reInvent, we launched Amazon Comprehend, right? Comprehend is a text analytics service. It helps you look into text and understand what's in there, right? We started out with general things that we could detect, like people, places, things, sentiment, the language the text yeah. is written in, and so on. But when we started, customers have picked on it, and they're using it a lot. Um, but as they keep using it, they came back to us and said, hey, it's great that you guys have this this, um, um, you're giving us the capability to understand general language, but some of our domains have some special language. Like jargon. Like, yeah, like le take the legal domain, for example, right? It's got judges and defendants and very particular things yeah. that are very relevant to the legal domain. So they were asking us for a capability to sort of extend to comprehend to include their custom domain of terms and phrases, if yeah. you will, right? So last week we actually launched a, a custom, um, uh, custom entities feature that allows them to bring in their custom domain into Comprehend, yeah, yeah. so that Comprehend can be extended to include their domain. Um, so legal language is difficult uh, to understand, but medical language, on the other hand, is even more harder to understand. Yeah, exactly. Right. And Acronyms, you, jargon. Absolutely. What does an entity look like? Extracting that. And, and extracting misspelled. entities is alone, yeah, misspells, right? But relating those entities together is super important because. You could, in one clinical note, you could have multiple drugs in there with different dosages, uh, different frequencies, and so, so you need to be able to relate those entities together, right? And that's the sort of thing that Comprehend Medical allows our customers to do uh, to solve some really So you're doing a lot of that entity extraction in, under the covers, is that right? How does it work? I mean, how does Comprehend Medical work? I mean, just out of the box, you have to train it? Just give some There's no training need, uh, needed, no machine learning expertise needed. Uh, so the, the algorithm extracts these entities as well as the relationship between those entities and then also extracts any attributes that might be related such as negation or past and future or what's anatomy of the body relates and whatnot. All that is done yeah. out of the box. And that's super important. You want to know whether the patient stopped taking a medication, right? Yeah. So negation, things like that. You want to know because that gives you the context. Just getting the terms alone doesn't really tell you much. Andy Jazz had a great video about the F1 um, analytics. Imagine having yeah. that for a person. That's right. You're not doing good right now. Take a break. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so I feel like we're kind of now scratching the surface of uh, scratching the surface of healthcare yeah. transformation. When yeah. you think about the healthcare industry, for years it's been compliance driven, yes. whether it's HIPAA, Affordable Care Act, yes. EMR and meaningful use. Right. But the industry hasn't been you know, dramatically transformed and disrupted, and it kind of needs to be. Yes. How do you guys see that evolving? I feel like you're now beginning to see that sea change. And yep. it's going to take a while, it's a, it's a high risk business obviously, but what's your sort of prognosis for that transformation and, and what's the vision as to the outcome? Yes, no, that's a really great question. I mean, one thing, I mean, one great thing's happened over the last decade is the digitization of your medical record. Um, so, and that's really wonderful because before it was all paper-based primarily, unless you were in an acute setting. So now the majority of um, the US, for example, and globally, there's this huge adop uh, adoption of, and propagation of these electronic medical records. The issue uh, there remains now when the majority of that data is observations and conversations as well as unstructured, that, that creates a different kind of roadblock for our customers. And this is where we're hoping for a service like Amazon Comprehend Medical that's HIPAA eligible, uh, meets a lot of the, uh, the, the compliance uh, or help our customer meet their compliance needs that we'll be able to um, uh, 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 remove the heavy lifting of this undifferentiated um, uh, task about you know having you know large amount of time being spent on analyzing this text and extracting very little. Where now with Amazon Comprehend Medical, be able to really fast track that and, and be able to elevate that. You hit the, hit the nail on the head on the undifferentiated heavy lifting. Right. Yeah. 
that's the ethos of DevOps. Exactly. Yeah. Let me let me give you some stats. Yeah. Actually, there are 1.2 billion medical documents that are generated every year in the U.S. And 80% of them, it's unstructured text. So to make sense of that, it's going to enable our customers to do some really amazing things. Um, one of the things, one of the use cases that we see is, is clinical trial recruitment. So. Uh, Fred Hutchinson, which is one of the yeah, nation's top, that, yeah. Yeah, the nation's top uh, cancer research centers, um, they recruit uh, patients for clinical trials. If you go to clinicaltrials.gov, you'll see like 290,450 clinical trials open, and typically from history we know that most of these clinical trials don't end up recruiting, uh, they don't end up meeting their recruiting goals, because it's very hard to figure out which patients fit the clinical trial that you're actually trying to perform. Uh, so Comprehend Medical helps these customers to very quickly narrow it down. Expand yeah. on the involvement of people in the community. You mentioned Fred Hutch, and Roach has also been involved from what I heard. Yeah. What, who was involved in this project? It sounds like it was a collaboration. Take a minute to explain that. Right, I mean, it's very similar to a lot of other services that we put into the market. We collaborate a lot with customers. 90% of what we do is really coming from customers. So we've collaborated with people like Fred Hutch and some of the nation's top institutions to help us validate the service that we've built, to actually make sure that it's meeting sort of the requirements for those use cases that they are thinking of. Uh, so we collaborate closely with them to get the service to where it is today, and we announced it as generally available yesterday. Okay, so what's the use case? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I can expand a little bit on yeah, that. So yeah. Some of the customers as well, their use cases. Uh, we're talking anywhere from hospital systems that want to use um, uh, uh, or take advantage of their unstructured text for things such as identify people who are for their follow-up appointments or stopping treatments or uh, finding alternative routes. To uh, the billers, uh, we're trying to identify is the accurate procedures were done, did we account for all the procedures, account for all the billing, which oftentimes is hidden in those unstructured texts and require a lot of manual process and oftentimes the rules don't, can't really scale. Yeah. Um, to things such as clinical trials, uh, recruitment, how can you, I mean, for example, in Fred Hutchinson, um, uh, Cancer Institute uh, use case for to identify a patient and match them to the right clinical trial. These patients oftentimes have Harry Potter's worth of clinical notes <laughs> done on them and then they'll launch you on a journey and to go through, from one institution to another another and be able to really find, it's no longer a needle in a haystack, it's like a needle in the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean yeah. uh, and then be able to really do that match from hours and months down to a few seconds and that's really the beauty about the service. John likes to talk about the 20 mile stair, and I wonder if we could just look ahead. Um, yeah. How far can we take AI and machine learning in, in healthcare, and how far should we take it? And I, maybe a more specific question is, as a practitioner, you know, when do you think machines might make better diagnoses than doctors, if ever? How do you feel about that? Where, where do you see this all going? I, I think, I mean, the whole idea about machine learning, the beauty about it, I mean, similar to how the stethoscope was introduced, similar to how the yeah. uh, um, uh, thermometer was introduced in medicine. And these are tools that we use to our advantage to really provide better care and, and better outcomes, and that's really what we're, that's the mission that our health IT and customers and whatnot are really driving towards. Uh, uh, machine learning can do a lot of great things for routine things that human being can, can go and focus their attention other things such as like Fred Hutchinson, instead of going and mining these diagnoses and mounts and mounts of data, a machine learning will be able to identify that where the clinical staff can focus on care. And that's really where, where I think, I mean, over the next decade and so, we're going to see a lot of this advancement in, in these building blocks, as well as what Amazon's offering from uh, forecasting and prediction, uh, algorithms and whatnot, we'll be able to find, uh, you know, fine tune our um, uh, capabilities to help customers achieve even yeah. precision medicine. It's real world impact because you're Absolutely. changing the, yeah. the, the workflow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, someone's in the wrong line or the wrong process based upon their history. Yeah. The HIPAA, HIPAA um, requirements really cause a lot of this record sharing thing to be a problem from what we've been reporting over the years. It's kind of a solution to that. So if I move to a service, medical service, I get all that re records with me. Is this kind of how you see going and how does, are there regulations that are holding you back that are blockers? Is that clear now? How does that solve the industry challenges of privacy? Yeah. I mean, if you look at the healthcare system today, there are lots of inefficiencies in there, right? Yeah. In the end, this is all about improving patient outcomes and making sure that we reduce costs, and that's what this boils down to, and these are tools that allow our customers to do exactly that. 
Well guys, thanks for sharing this insight. Uh, Comprehend Medical is really awesome opportunity. It's, I think it's early days, day one as you guys say. Right. Um, I think there's so much more that could be there. I'd love to see the industry, just from a personal you know, society change, it's just get out of the way of all these <laughs> hurdles. Get the data out there, expose the data, check the privacy box. We'd be good, right? This is going to change the game. Yeah, maybe we should say a little bit yeah. about the how we built the service in terms of that, right? As you know, at AWS, security and privacy is number one for us, right? So this service is HIPAA eligible. It's a stateless service. What that means is nothing gets stored. Um, it's not The data is not used to improve the models or anything like that. The only person that can actually see the data is the customer. He's got the keys, he's the only one that's sending the data to the endpoint, and whatever he gets back, only he can decrypt it. So we've taken care to make sure that we can remove some of those hurdles that people have always been worried about. Um, well, so doctors, we, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you so much for having us yeah, here. Yeah. All right, we are bringing you all the action here from AWS reInvent. Again, as the compute power is increased, as software is written with new apps, AI is changing the game. Of course, the Cube had a lot of video. We're going to need some of these services to make these transcribes on the fly. Thanks for coming on, really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Be back with so more much. after this Thank short break. Thank you for your time. Thank you.